Hello, I'm Dr. Tom Watson, Professor of Public Relations in the Media School of Bournemouth University in England. In this presentation, I report and discuss recent research into the skills, competencies and training needs of future senior communicators in both in-house and consultancy operations. The benchmark statement that we used when developing this study came from Pat Sanchez, a US communicator who is well known in IABC. He said in 2005 that the future senior corporate communicator will be an adroit strategist, a creative technician, and a skilled facilitator, a friend of technology, and an exponent of lifelong learning. Along with other concepts and research, the Sanchez statement was tested in the study. The aim of this research was to guide the public relations industry on the training and educational topics needed to prepare the next generation of leaders in globally integrated organisations. As we all know, the reputation of organisations is increasingly challenged in this age of rapid response. So communicators need to be educated and trained in higher skills, and this research will help identify the most important competencies and education needed. The objectives of the study were to identify the knowledge, skills, relationships, 360 degree vision and managerial abilities that senior communications professionals will need in five years time and to identify what it takes to prepare the next generation of communication leaders in these globally integrated organisations. The study was commissioned and undertaken for the Institute for Public Relations in the United States and sponsored by Coca-Cola. My co-researcher was Dr. Chindu Sridhar. We reviewed a wide range of academic and professional literature before preparing 12 propositions that all had forward-looking points of view. The study to test these propositions was undertaken amongst an elite group of senior communicators in Europe and North America who were identified through measurement of the Institute for Public Relations and our own database. They were surveyed by email and phone. From the responses to the 12 propositions, we developed a ranking in order of importance from one being most important and 12 being least important. The top rank three were, first, communication strategy will be ever more tightly linked to overall business strategy and less on organisational publicity. Competencies in strategic management will be part of senior communicators' portfolios. Second, senior communicators will need to have broader analytical and critiquing skills in order to become trusted senior advisors. And thirdly, a more interdisciplinary set of skills, knowledge and competencies is needed for senior communicators in order that they act as advisors of equal standing with other senior operational colleagues. You can see that these three are all linked through common factors of managerial and strategic competencies that move away from communication skills alone. Now to the next three. Ranked equal fourth were senior communicators will become the cross-discipline reputation officer in their organisation. This will involve higher level internal networking and communication skills and organisational knowledge in order to be effective. Also equal fourth, senior communicators should focus more on engagement with stakeholders and less on media relations. Skills of negotiation and relationship management will need development. And then sixth, proof of performance which is the demonstration of the value of communication strategy to the organisation, will require higher skills of analysis, planning and measurement of outcomes. Again, interdisciplinarity and higher skills of negotiation, analysis and relationship management were identified. The propositions ranked 7th to 9th add detail to the earlier, more highly ranked propositions. Seventh, future senior communicators must be able to interpret changes and trends in communication technologies and practices. They will measure and evaluate the real value of evolving media forms, including social media, 
not just the traffic. Eighth, the creation of social capital and the maintenance of the organisation's operating licence will be an increasingly important role for senior communicators. And ninth, the increasing internationalisation of corporations will require greater competencies in senior communicators in culturally sensitive communication, its management and coordination. The final three propositions, 10 to 12, were effectively dismissed by the sample as not relevant. So what do these responses tell us? First, training and education in strategizing is ranked as being very important because communication is being linked more closely to business strategy. There was general agreement that senior communicators must have a multidisciplinary background and reliance on media relations or public relations skills alone would be a de facto barrier to progression. One respondent said that a typical weakness of many senior communicators was that they lacked business and operational experience. He argued that they should insist on career paths that move them closer to the corporation's operations. There was strong support for PR to lead on the cross-discipline chief reputation officer role, although this is a contested area in many large corporations. An interesting element was that the issue of measurement of communication expressed as proof of performance ranked only sixth, whereas it usually ranked second or third in other studies, perhaps an indication of greater confidence in the methods being used. It was also notable that the emphasis on the impact of digital technology upon communication, which was highlighted in the Arthur Page Society's Authentic Enterprise in 2007, as being fundamental to a reconsideration of the operation of future public relations and corporate communication, ranked only seventh. Respondents considered that the competency of future senior communicators to interpret changes and trends in communication technologies and practices was much less important than the ability to create effective business-linked communication strategies. This indicates that management and exploitation of social media and other technologies are competencies that, by mid-decade, will be undertaken by middle-level communication managers who would also lead on media relations. One surprising outcome of the study of international communicators was the low ranking for knowledge and skills in culturally sensitive communication. This is counterintuitive for this globally operating sample and needs further study. In addition to ranking the comments, the respondents were also able to comment upon them, and they did so with gusto. Here are three that I share with you. First, it's no longer sufficient to have a communications background only. Senior communicators need to understand the business environment and management styles to be seen as trusted advisors. Somewhat controversially, another made this recommendation. Senior communicators should drop out of the media world. That's just one aspect next to many, many others. As for evaluation, the focus must be on value and its expression. One notable comment from a top European communicator was, no management function escapes evaluation. We should forget measurement and focus on value and how to grasp and express it. After considering the outcomes of the study, three areas of development are indicated. These are in practice, training and development, and proof of performance. These are vital for senior corporate communicators to achieve personal progression to main board level and for higher levels of business effectiveness. Let's start with practice. Communication strategy must be linked to or be part of business strategy. The days of communication or public relations as a publicity only action are both past and constantly threatened with budget cuts. Communicators should understand the whole business environment, not just media and communication. And operational experience across the whole of a business, not just the communication areas, is needed in order that senior communicators can represent the organisation externally with authority. They must speak the language of the business with fellow senior managers. Now for training and education. 
The key subjects for senior communicators are business strategy, financial literacy, economics and relationship management. These can be delivered through training programs or via executive programs in universities. There also needs to be a stronger focus on research skills and more training on market and business analysis methods such as PEST and qualitative data interpretation. Finally, proof of performance. The ability to interpret and apply the most appropriate research methods is more important than technical measurement skills, which can be undertaken by middle or junior communicators or external suppliers. Evaluation frameworks, the respondents said, need to be developed for judgment on organisational impact, not just clip measurement. With these more powerful interpretive methods, communication planning skills will improve and offer more effective implementation of communication that is fully integrated with business strategy. This report opened with Pat Sanchez's recipe for the future corporate communicator as an adroit strategist, a creative technician and a skilled facilitator, a friend of technology and an exponent of lifelong learning. This study agrees with most of these characteristics and it adds its own, but we take exception with the senior communicator as the creative technician. The study found that this is a role that others will undertake by 2015 as the future communicator will have more focus on relationship development, reputation management and the integration of communication strategy within the broader business strategy. It is an exciting and challenging future that corporate communicators will have to drive forward themselves.